Hi everybody, it's Lorraine Murray here from Big Connected Kids. Um, I hope you're well and I'm going to do a very short video with some top tips on helping you with your negativity bias. This was a term that I came across quite recently and it's our natural propensity to focus on the negative which us human beings can be experts at. And the idea of negativity bias um, you may not be familiar with is something that we've been hardwired uh, with for a long, long time as human beings to help us survive. So back in caveman days, if there was a, a rustling uh, bush that we thought had berries on it, we'd have to be pretty careful that the reason it was rustling was the wind and not some big tiger sitting behind it. So we have this um, natural ability within us with, through our nervous system just to detect any negativity in our environment which may threaten their survival. So that was great in the caveman days but it's not quite so helpful in these days when we are bombarded and I really mean that bombarded with negative imagery through social media and regular media as well of all the bad things that are going on in this world. It can um, take over our negativity bias and it can leave us feeling quite deflated, depressed and unable to actually feel anything positive at all. So I'm going to give you some top tips um, on how to cope with that if your negativity bias is taken over. And it's not that it's a bad thing, it's a very positive thing actually because it keeps us alive. But it is about balance, always about balance. So one of the things you can do, and it's actually a technique from Rick Hansen, who's a psychologist um, who, who looks, who's talked about the negativity bias in some detail, is that sometimes when we have a, a positive experience, we very quickly dismiss it. Um, so we don't allow ourselves to fully immerse and experience what it is that we're, we're seeing and feeling and sensing. And he talked about in some of his online chats that if we just were to savour that experience, so for example, if I am looking out of the window and it's sunny and it's a really gorgeous view, which it is from my office, and I allow myself to really enjoy the beauty of it, maybe even the warmth of the sun. Um, I allow myself to, to take in all the colours I'm experiencing and to really be mindful actually of that moment. And if I do that for 15 seconds or more, but a minimum of 15 seconds, I will help start to bring the negativity bias into balance, especially if I do that on a regular basis. And 15 seconds, it's not really that long in the great scheme of things. So that's one idea that you may wish to try. Another idea which is quite useful is keeping a gratitude diary. And um, this is kind of combined with setting an intention to feel gratitude. And I know that when we're, we're feeling um, the opposite of any kind of gratitude that we, we can feel that what's the point. But even if we are to take a moment every day, whether that's the beginning of your day or the end of your day, to just jot down three things that we feel really grateful for. And it could be that we're alive, that's one thing we feel grateful for. It could be that we have the love of people around us or a pet, that could be something else we feel grateful for. Or just that we perhaps live in a society where we have clean water and uh, we have food that we can eat that's not contaminated. So it, I don't know what your three things are, I'm just giving you some very basic examples. But those three things, um, along with anything else you can think of on a daily basis, will start to really turn the corner on your negativity bias and help bring that back into balance. And they do say that if you practice this every day for three weeks, it really helps the, the neurons, uh, the pathways in your brain to kind of rewire themselves and make it easier for the more positive thoughts to kind of find a, a route and to take up uh, some space in our, in our heads and our mind. And then the, the third thing that you can consider um, to help you with the, the negativity bias is, is writing down what the problem is that you are facing. Um, we do this in class sometimes. We can, um, we can really circulate a lot of thoughts in our head. I mean, it's estimated that we think 60,000 thoughts a day. So we can become very tired, especially if we're thinking the same consistent negative thought. 
And sometimes when we write it down, well, it uses a different part of our brain to write something down, so that's great. We get a nice little connection across the brain. But when we write something down, we're helping ourselves to process, especially the, the emotion of what we're feeling. And when we write it down and we can see it, um, sometimes we can, well, destroy it. We can just crumple it up or burn it if that makes us feel better. Sometimes we might even... Um, put it in a drawer and then come back to it later um, and then maybe find a solution to it. And other times it's just the clarity of knowing what it is that really bothers you can, can offload some of the weight in our minds that we're carrying around. So those are my three top tips for helping you to deal with your negativity bias. I hope you found it helpful. Um, obviously the, the mindfulness of really appreciating the moment can be something you can practice and if you want some more help with that then please join me on one of my meditation courses, my online ones. I've got an online meditation club I do once a month now. Um, I also have an online course and very exciting we have a mindfulness course that's coming online which I'm doing in collaboration with a great friend of mine and um, it really helps you to hone your mindfulness skills. So wishing you a wonderful day and um, keep practicing focusing on something really positive even if it's only for 15 seconds. Bye for now.